Hello, everybody. It's Heather with the Leadership with Heart podcast. And today I am thrilled. I have Paige Velasquez Buddy on. And I'm, I'm so excited because it's she works in an area that I don't usually dive deep into as far as leadership. So uh, we're going to find out some more about her and, and hopefully it'll enlighten us in our leadership journey. So welcome, Paige. Hi, Heather. Thank you so much for having me on today. So tell everybody, the listeners right now, where are you right in your, in your leadership journey? Yeah, so here at Zilker Media, um, I'm the CEO and a partner in the business, and we're about six years in to our business, which is really exciting. It's a, it's a big milestone for us kind of being on the other side of that first five-year celebration, and it, it's just been so incredible to see the company that we've been able to build, but more importantly, the people that we've been able to build it with. And that's what I love about my job and the opportunity that I have to lead here is because the people are what make it really fun every day. It, it makes such a difference, I believe, to be able to do what you love every day, but also be able to do, do it with who you love alongside you as well. And, and that's really what we see with our team here. You know, I, some of these team members I've been working with for over 10 years, you know, some of them that we've been part of another previous agency back in when we were in all book marketing world only and to see us grow, you know, and add new talent and be able to find something just extremely special with the types of clients that we get to work with. It's, it's just such an exciting journey to, to be on. And so we're kind of where we, we got to that five-year milestone. We all you know, cheered and celebrated. It, we did such a fun exercise whenever we got there. We took a look back at you know when we were in year one, we wrote out our five-year vision. And it was just so incredible to look back on that vision and see how much we had accomplished and what had happened far beyond what we could dream of at that time. And we kind of read those out to our team that was there. And it was just so fun to see that. And, and now it's just even more exciting to look forward to the next, you know, five or 10 years and alongside the team that, that we have here. So, so at Zilker Media, we do public relations as well as digital marketing um, for, for thought leaders and the companies that they lead. And really our goal is to help accelerate trust for these thought leaders and these companies. And so we focus more on what we call people-driven brand building. So what we do is we work with a company and we decide, say, who are the key opinion leaders? Who are the thought leaders of the company that we can put out alongside the company to help accelerate trust on behalf of the company? So a lot of times what we're doing is we're working with the C-suite executives, we're working with founders, uh, we're working with incredible authors. And really what we're focused on is how do we build that thought leadership? If you are building your brand, if you're building your company and only leading with a corporate logo when it comes to marketing, it's going to be really hard to ever gain trust with consumers today. Because when they see that corporate logo, a lot of consumers immediately feel like they are going to be marketed to and that they are being sold to. But when you lead with an individual alongside the brand, you have someone that is there that is able to teach and entertain and educate versus sell them something. And so it, it becomes really a huge differentiator for those companies that are going up against massive competitors with massive marketing budgets. They're able to differentiate themselves by leading with their most unique assets which is their people. The role you have here as co-founder. Um, what have you found when we think about leadership with heart? What have you found to be the most challenging part of, of kind of upholding the leadership with heart philosophy and the work you do? Yeah. I think one of the hardest things as a leader is, is sometimes just the, the, the weight of the decisions that you have every single day in terms of the decisions that you make not only impact your clients, but it also impacts the team and in their families. And so really looking at how do I do this in a way that's, how do we make these decisions in a way that are best interest for 
the team, the families, the future of not only where we want the business to go, but also where the, where the people want to go as well. And it's really important to cast that vision, set that vision, and then over communicate that vision. And I think one of the best things that you can do as a leader that is so challenging and it's and it, you know, at times can be very challenging is ask the right question. You know, a lot of times leader here, leaders mm -hmm. here ask questions, but what are the right questions that really get to the root of what's working, what's not, you know, what strategic direction do we need to go with the company? And so that's really, but I've been, you know, really honing in on to uncover is what are those right questions? How do we get to the root? Cause? How do we understand really what direction we should go that's best for our people and their growth and is best for the types of clients that we want to serve as well as externally what is going on in the media environment? And it's really making sure that all three things of that aligns while having the right people in the right seats. Um, and it, that can be really challenging is to, to make sure you find those right questions. And I don't always get it right. Sometimes I, I ask questions, I listen, and then I realize I didn't ask the right question. So I have to go back and really dig deeper. I think the best thing that you can be as a leader is just overly curious. And sometimes that takes you continually to ask questions and then pausing and being okay mm -hmm. with the silence and really thinking through what's the right next question to ask. Mm, that's so true. Asking the right questions. I um, I had just wrote a book not, uh, recently called The Art of Active Listening. And, and we yeah. talk a lot about how questions are important and how the pause and reflection on what the questions reveal to us is important. And and I loved your the way what you said earlier about the focus of like, what's the, the best like strategic direction for the clients. And at the same time, like how does that align with what your team members need? And that right. balance, which is so hard. And I bet you, does it, does it keep you up at night at all? Oh my goodness, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I think any any leader that says it doesn't isn't being completely truthful with themselves. And and that's the hard thing is the, the weight of that, you know, making sure that all of that's being balanced. You have alignment on what's going on externally, what's happening with your clients and, and what's happening with your people and making sure that's in alignment at all times is something that never ends. Mm, I know. And I, I find that to be hard too. I get, I find difficulty in it. Um, and especially like me, I have a, a pretty small business and there's five of us total and thinking about how we like if I have to make this move, am I going to overburden my people, my team members mm -hmm. with the things that need to get done because my vision got bigger or something. And then they love the vision, but they have to keep up with the vision from an implementation perspective. And right. the leadership at heart or the caring leadership component in my mind is saying, how important is this new vision as far as needing it to get done right now? Or uh, let's see if the team believes in this vision is where we should actually be going or, uh, should we halt this and wait till next year? Like all the different things like that, yeah. figuring out, is this going to overburden them? Is their well-being going to be compromised? Because, because maybe I wasn't willing to put a, put aside the thing I was so excited about in a moment. Um, it's a hard balance. To have. Absolutely. <laughs> um, and I, I don't always get it right. You know, there, yeah. there are times where, you know, we, we've leaned into something and had to come back out and pause and really reflect and then and then readdress it down the road because it just wasn't the right time. Mm, so uh, so I'm curious to know, like the people that, that that do look to you as the leader, what do they say about your leadership style? How would they describe you? <laughs> you know, that that's really funny. Um, you know, I would I would hope they would characterize me as a servant leader because that's really what I try to focus on with my actions is people first and then you know let's look at everything else. Um, you know, I I also, you know, hopefully team members say I also have a lot of grace with leadership as well. That's something that is really important because if we're we're not trying, if we're not making mistakes, we're not growing enough. And, and that's really kind of what I try to speak into the team is we're not gonna be perfect, 
we're going to make mistakes. We're all human and we should be doing that or we're not growing enough. It's so important what you do after a mistake is made or after um, you know, something happens that really determines the character and really determines if you're upholding our core values. Um, you know, our, our team knows that I love to be an efficiency machine. So I like to ask a lot of questions. Are we doing this efficiently enough? Are we spending our time highest value for the client and for ourselves? And if we're not, if there are things that we're doing that are not in the way, can we get rid of them or do them a different way? And so they always like to ask because they know the question's coming <laughs> a lot of times. <laughs> <laughs> you know, what result are we looking for here? You know, is there, is there a different way to do this? Have we thought about it this way? Um, you know, and so I would say those are kind of the, the key characteristics that, you know, I've, I've heard in like a 360, but also that I really try and trust me, do not get right all the time, mm -hmm. but I really, really try to, to bring into action a lot of those. Mm, I love that. So th this is like a point in the show where I like to ask, this is like a little bit harder because you have to think yeah. in the moment about a time when maybe you weren't the best version of yourself. Maybe you weren't this person who uh, led with heart or worse in the moment didn't really just demonstrate what you might think of as a caring leader. And I'm going to ask you to define yeah. what that is here in a minute, but um, tell us that story. What Can you think of a specific scenario where maybe you didn't feel like you were leading with heart, like you didn't feel like you were caring leader in the moment. Yeah. What, was, what did it look like? And then what did you do to kind of come out of it to become more enlightened? Absolutely. Um, well, there's, there's several times where I've made mistakes like that. And I, I think that's the biggest thing is being self-aware of those mistakes and trying to, to learn from them and, and do better next time. You know, one particular, one particular instance comes to mind for me, and it was kind of going back to what you were saying earlier there, there was a vision for a change and a shift in the way we were handling process internally, the way we were managing clients internally and, and servicing clients and had this vision, got the leadership team on board. Leadership team's been talking about this you know, for several months and then we roll it out to the full team and then it was full steam ahead. <laughs> but we weren't quite ready for full steam ahead. And that's the thing is, I realized in that moment, the poor communication that I had, I was looking at it at black and white mm -hmm. and leadership is not black and white no. at all. Mm -mm. And it should never be black and white. Mm -mm. And I was going and it. And I know myself, I am such a logical thinker. I really have to, to work through, I think quickly. And I think very logically, and I have to pull myself back and really understand what's the communication picture that we're architecting here. And how can we make sure that everybody understands how their function relates to this vision? And that was the thing that I had missed. I had missed sharing with everybody, what does this mean for each individual person on our team? Why are they so integral and so important mm -hmm. to where we're going and the shift in our vision? And that completely did not communicate that the first time that we rolled this out. And so that was the big thing is the reason why we made this shift was because of the incredible talent we have on the team. And so it just was a big missed flag for me in terms of, I completely missed, I, I missed that step. And I didn't share with anybody, you know, enough around the why recasting the vision, reworking, you know, hey, remember, here's our vision. Here's why we're doing this. And here's how each person contributes to this. This is why this decision mm -hmm. was made with each person in mind. And, you know, it really caused a lot of confusion. And, and that's the biggest thing is now I've really learned from that just because I was going, oh my goodness, I took a step back and this was, you know, the first time they had heard this type of plan and they were, you know, expected to implement it that week. That wasn't realistic. Yeah. And so I had to go back to our team and say, hey, I know this wasn't done right the first time. And I want to make sure that everybody feels fully confident in what this vision is, why this shift is happening and how your specific role and function contributes to this. And that, that's been a big game changer 
And, you know, I think the biggest thing was them hearing from me that it wasn't done right the first time. And I understand where the confusion was and why there was questions and frustration um, and, and just really kind of working backwards to, to reaffirm everything and, and make shifts, even from that original vision, just based on their feedback and, and really pause and ask questions even after I shared that. Mm-hmm. And to make sure everybody was still in alignment along the way. When you do any mm-hmm. type of internal shift or any type of strategy shift, I do think it's important to have that feedback loop open. So we really work to find new ways to open that feedback loop, whether it was, you know, one-on-ones with direct reports, whether it's, you know, anonymous surveys that are set out. We, I mean, anything and everything is exactly what we've implemented this time because the first time I missed the mark so much. Uh, I can tell this resonates with me so much because I'm a doer entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. I'm absolutely a doer. And, and I'm, I also, uh, yeah, I can be seen as impulsive. I'm a gut person. Uh, And it's so funny because the work we do has a lot to do with data. So employee fanatics, my consulting firm is a lot about um, helping organizations get to the truth of the matter, but using their quantitative and qualitative data to get that so they can then solve for that and, and build a better culture and culture of engagement retention. Wow. But you can't, but, but often what happens is like, in this case, I'm saying that, and then I'll do this impulsive thing. And I try to really yeah. include the team and I allow the team to rule me out often. Mm. So yeah. I'll, I'll, say, I'll say, what do you think? And they'll be like, nope, I don't think that I'm like, okay, I guess you want me doing that. And then we just kind of keep going on. Right. Yeah. Uh, but then sometimes I'm like, oh, I really want to do this. <laughs> I just go do the thing. And I'm like, did I just do that thing? And I didn't get them to, I didn't get buy-in from on, on you know, right quite yet, quite yet. Yeah. Uh, I'm like, dang it. Now I got to roll myself backwards. And so I totally get yeah. uh, where you're coming from with this one. And it, and yeah. I do think that when we think about how this goes against like leadership at heart or carrying leadership principles, the idea of set, setting a clear direction, giving people like the proper job tools to kind of get what they need to get done uh, in time that they needed, making sure they're yeah. super clear and they understand and they see why they're, like you said, the, the connection point where what they do connects to the end goal. And it's hard for them to do that if we're moving so quickly that we steamroll everything. Uh, they never right. get that clarity. They never get that sense of connection to, to the purpose and and then it's just like, boom, boom, boom. And they're just like, they're basically putting out fires just to catch up with you. Right. And, and we get so excited, <laughs> you know, as leaders sometimes <laughs> that we just put blinders on, right? We get, yeah. we get so excited. We get so focused and we haven't realized, okay, we've been thinking about this for the last three to six months, but this mm-hmm. is the first time, you know, they have an opportunity to hear about that. And that's when I have to take a step back a lot of the time and really think through how is this best communicated? What questions should I be asking to make sure my blinders aren't Mm -hmm. on and I'm actually seeing everything. And that's key is, you know, also setting the expectation, Hey, this isn't going to be perfect. And I want to know where the friction is. Mm -hmm. That's where we need to solve Mm -hmm. Um, and getting really clear about that. But also knowing there's going to take, there needs to be time and there needs to be a roll out plan it needs to be a realistic yeah. roll out plan you yeah know, it's just having that patience and and ha- making sure it's done right is important uh, I always feel like I'm more patient than not but there's an occasional blip which just happened recently by the way yeah <laughs> <laughs> my team would be listening now going uh-huh I know exactly what that was uh but often like I what a, what a so hard to do is I let I really want my team to be able to say can we put the brakes on or like no that doesn't sound reasonable or like that makes mm-hmm. absolutely no sense and I want them to feel safe about it and I usually yeah. I would say like I would I feel like and I, I think my team would say that like about 85% of the time I'm good at that and there's that 15% where I just I completely don't don't allow that in and I and it's yeah. just and I hate myself afterward <laughs> Exactly, exactly. Uh, but I do it. We're not perfect. Like none of us are perfect. You right, can write about right. it and talk about it, but we're not perfect at it. So, <laughs> but I think the self awareness is key, right? <laughs> mm-hmm. I always say, but there's there's self awareness. So, there's when we look at emotional intelligence, I can think of like yeah. four quadrants, and there's a self awareness part, which is so critical. But there's also like emotional self management and mm, being able to yeah. say, yes, I'm aware and I'm going to stop myself which right. will happen a lot, but I, I would say like my emotional self-management is probably the place, the regulation part, it might be one of my yeah. weakest points. And it's like, oh my gosh, I'm so excited. And it's like, wait a second, <laughs> slow down. 
back up and don't, you know, make sure that you control that thing. So I think, you know, yeah. it is important to be aware, but we also have to be, re- make sure our response is aligned with our awareness too, you know? Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> It's okay. putting it into action. <laughs> it is putting it into action. Oh my gosh. That's the hard part. <laughs> it really is. Well, so, so now that we've said that, like, how do you, what, in your own words, how would you define leadership with heart? What do you, when you think of a leader with heart, with, how do you define that person? Yeah. I, you know, the, the first phrase that comes to mind is, is that servant leadership. So focusing on the honor to serve others. And that's really what, you know, I think the mindset should be is you have an opportunity, you have an honor, and there's a lot of responsibility in that to, to do the best you can for others. And so that they have an incredible environment at work. They also have an incredible environment to blend with their life. And they're also, you know, fulfilled in what they do and making sure that you have the people that make up a team of that, but are also living out those values every day. Um, you know, I also believe that that leader is is not black and white. So mm-hmm. someone that's, you know, leading with heart. And, and I, yeah, and I mentioned that earlier is I was thinking black and white and that's mm-hmm. the wrong way to do it. Leadership should never, ever yeah. be black and white. There's mm-hmm. so much more to consider um, when making decisions or leading or asking the right questions or, you know, facilitating a one-on-one with somebody and the ability to be able to dig deeper into the logical black and white to me Mm. is someone who is really leading with heart. Mm, I love that. I hadn't really heard that definition before, but I love that. So this is the point now where you get to ask me a question. So I'm, you know, I'm in the space that I'm in and culture engagement, listening, you get to, we get to turn the tables and you get to ask me any question you want. And I don't, I haven't had time to prepare. So what, what might, would you, what would you (laughs) want to ask me? What would you say is the most important thing for culture post-pandemic and with the economic shifts that we've seen recently? Mm. I think the organizations that are able to maintain the connectedness Mm. between the team and the leaders and between the team and the mission and like the vision of the organization And the and which then of course aligns with the team and the cus like the customer. So them, the team, the customer. So all the connection points, uh, I think is yeah. the most important because what happens is, and I, I even experienced this last week, being gone for nine days straight. And so you know, there's all these people all over my fa- my, my family at home, my husband. There's this level of disconnection or disjointedness that happens when you're when you're like out of sight, out of mind, right? Absolutely. And as we re-enter, there has to be a level of intentionality to create, to recreate the connectedness that was there before you weren't there. And Mm -hmm. so I think the level of intentionality of saying, how do we make sure that our people still understand our mission and vision? How do they understand in the world we're in now, hybrid, virtual, whatever it is, um, how do they understand how they can make that still come to life in the way we were two years ago um, or in a different way, but that's still exciting to everybody. And how can we also make sure they keep the connection with our customers so that our customers understand who we are, what we represent and the relationship they have with them. So I think those organizations that do that well are going to maintain a strong culture. The ones that can't figure out how to keep that connect and connection points, connect a tissue in line are going to be the ones who struggle um, and they Mm -hmm. won't be in business long. And that's yeah. what I've found to be true. No matter if it's a group of tech people, if it's a group of accountants, if it's a group of lawyers, it doesn't really matter what it is. It's whatever that connected tissue was before finding a way to 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 bring it back to life again. And I, I don't know, I yeah. feel like we all experience this in our lives, you know? Yeah, absolutely. And I think it looks different than what it used mm-hmm. to, to look like for a lot of companies. Yeah. And you got to figure out what that special sauce is. What is the different for you? Uh, You know, those who are brave, you talked about asking deeper questions and those leaders that are brave enough to go deeper, to see like what the changing vision is for their team and their individual team players, as it relates to the work they're doing and what meaningful work looks like for them. Uh, when mm-hmm. they're brave to ask those deeper questions and they get to the truth of the matter, that's when you start to see the, the good stuff happen. Yeah. You know, because they're not solving Absolutely. for old news. They're solving for the new news. And right. I think that's when people feel hurt at that point. So, right. Absolutely. That was so, great. Thank you. So for those who are listening right now, um, 
and they're they're just kind of at an interesting point. Let's say let's say they're at a crossroads in their leadership, and they need some extra oomph, some extra motivation, some inspiration. What might be a couple pearls of wisdom you'd leave them with as they go about their journey this week and this month to come uh, for just being you know more caring leaders? Yeah, I I found a few things that have really helped me. Um, you know, one I've said continuously is really identifying the right questions to ask. When you can't solve a problem, the best thing is to be curious with those around you that could potentially be thinking partners for you. So having, you know, making a list of the right questions, really doing a thinking session. And um, there's this incredible book called um, one, A Minute to Think. And she, Juliet, by Juliet Funch, talks all about the strategic pause. It's incredible. And, and doing that as a leader every once in a while is so incredibly important. And this is the time where I really think through what questions have I not asked yet versus trying to focus on solving the problem. It's more around, you know, those questions. I think another thing is finding the right thinking partner for you. And it might be different ones for different situations, whether that's a mentor, you know, for me, it's my business partner or whether that's a coach, I've had an executive coach in the past that's been phenomenal. Um, but finding the right thinking partner for the right situation, you know, especially as a leader, sometimes it can feel like an island, but opening up, being vulnerable and, and finding thinking partners and to help you solve, to ask you questions that maybe you haven't thought about. And don't just look for someone to give you advice, look for someone then that makes you think even more about what you're trying to solve. I'd say those two things for me have been absolutely key. And then, you know, one last thing is just continuing to learn and read. You're never gonna know all the answers and that's okay. But you can learn from those that have been through similar experiences in their past. So whether mm -hmm. that's seeking out other business owners in your industry that have maybe faced similar problems or finding a book you know, by someone in your industry or a leadership book that can help with that. Um, just, just continuing to surround yourself with people that are better than you and smarter than you in, in other areas is important. Mm, I love that. I, love, I call it accountability partner, but I love the thinking yeah. partner part side because, because like, so accountability says to me, like that you're going to, they're going to hold you accountable. They're going to keep you on the right course. The thinking side I like, because there's not, there's not necessarily an obligation to do anything other than just helping people's mind open up. And I love that right. part a lot. Um, and if it's somebody who's going to challenge you, then, I mean, they may or may not know you, but if they're well-rounded enough, they at least can like know life circumstances, like generalized enough where they can help you open up your mind too, to possibilities. Absolutely. I really love that a lot. I have a coach myself and, and, and when I find myself getting into, when I go into like one place, she's like, well, let's think of that differently though. Maybe it's this, I'm like, oh yeah, I never really thought about that way. <laughs> but exactly. she also has to hold me accountable. She has to hold me accountable right. too. She has to say, okay, well, where are we at now? And we're the, you know, so I think it's, it's good to have both, but I, I love that idea of a thinking partner. It's pretty powerful. Hmm. Yeah. So for those who are listening now, if you have taken away some really good nuggets from my conversation with Paige, please do share it far and wide. That's how we get more people listening to this stuff. It's how we can teach more leaders how to do this leadership at heart thing the right way. And a page to you really a big, huge thank you for, for being here and part of your knowledge and, and just opening your heart to us as well. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Heather. I love this discussion. And thanks everybody for joining the leadership with heart podcast. Be well. Thank you.